Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Disruptive Investing. And this week it's life with humanoid robots. So hopefully if you watch the show, you know about Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus. Tesla shows off Optimus from time to time over the past couple of years, but it really showed them off at their October We Robot event. At this event, we got to see them dancing and pouring drinks for guests. Lately, we even got to see one hanging out with Kim Kardashian, catching a tennis ball and going for a jog down a slippery hill. So maybe it ignited your imagination, but I think for most people, it's still just an abstract idea. Humanoid autonomous robots. But we're disruptive investors, right? Our job is to invest in technologies that are going to disrupt the way that things were done before. And I can't think of a more disruptive technology so far in human history than the day that the average person can buy or rent a humanoid autonomous robot. So let's imagine that future because it's going to be here before you know it. Don't get caught up in all the that can't happen because now it won't be as expensive as you think. OK, Elon himself has predicted that these will get as cheap as 20 to 30 thousand dollars. That's around 30 to 40 cents an hour. I earned more than that in my first job at a hardware store when I was five years old. I earned 35 cents an hour and that was back in 1975. So don't tell me that people aren't going to clamor for labor this cheap. And if your argument against this becoming reality is that they won't be able to make enough of them, then please tell me how many cell phones you thought there would be back in, say, the late 90s. Because right now there are an estimated 5.2 billion smartphones in use worldwide. And the last time I checked, even a cheap smartphone was hundreds of dollars. And please don't argue that humanoid autonomous robots won't be able to do much. Most humans I know can't do much. Just like self-driving cars, it may not be easy, but it certainly is not going to be impossible to train Optimus to do just about everything that a human can do. So if Elon is right and everyone in the world is going to have an Optimus, then what is life going to look like when that day happens? And when will that day happen? Look, there's no way to open up some chart and some spreadsheet and accurately predict those two answers accurately. Analysts try to do stuff like that all the time, but that's only even remotely possible with products and industries that already exist for long periods of time. The best that we can do is project based on educated guesses. And so let's just know that we're not going to be precisely right. And that's OK as disruptive investors. We don't really need to be precise. You can still make a lot of money, even if you're off by, say, a few years or even a few million units. This isn't like betting where it's like I bet for him to win on the third quarter of the you don't. That's not we're investors. Investing is I believe that this company is going to do well and it's going to go up. So I think one way to look at how quickly we're going to be able to build a billion robots is to estimate how hard they are to manufacture. And Elon is giving us an idea about that. He basically said that they're going to be easier to make than a Tesla vehicle. I mean, they have a lot of the same parts. They have battery packs. They have autonomous computers that Tesla makes already, by the way. They have several motors and they have cameras. Everything a Tesla vehicle has except for the seats and the wheels, pretty much. And the suspension. And the trunk. And the windscreen and the windows that go up and down. <laughs> But what makes them even easier to make than a Tesla vehicle is the fact that they weigh a lot less. Their battery packs are way smaller. And so it's very likely that they're going to be a bit faster and easier to produce than an electric car. Let's just say for argument's sake that they are three times faster and easier to produce. So typical Tesla Gigafactory can produce, say, 700,000 cars a year. That would mean that a Gigafactory should be able to produce about two million Optimus robots a year. And one of the first things that an Optimus robot is going to be able to do is make more Optimus robots, which in turn will continue to reduce the price of the Optimus robots that they produce because Optimi are way cheaper labor than humans. You can watch our Tesla bot equals end of human labor in depth to learn more about why we think that much of human labor is going to end with the introduction of Optimus. Now, I get it. That's a huge topic in and of itself, right? Human robots replacing human labor. But just go with us on this one. As a thought exercise, just imagine that in, say, 10 years, humanoid robots have replaced most human labor. What does the world look like? Picturing a day in the life sometimes helps me to understand a new technology because then I can kind of see how it affects my life. And from there, I can start to see all of the other technologies and effects that branch off from that. So I get up in the morning, brush my teeth, take a shower, and my handy Optimus robot acts as my personal valet, right? And helps me get ready for the day, picking up, doing laundry, cleaning up my messes. Maybe it makes note of the fact that I'm running out of toothpaste or shampoo. While I do some morning exercise, Optimus heads into the kitchen and starts getting my coffee and breakfast ready. And 
after that without even having to talk to it, it starts to get done a whole bunch of things on my to-do list or its to-do list, I should say. Going back to a job I had earlier in my life as a building contractor, I'm going to imagine that Optimus is my trusty employee, right? So I'm done with breakfast and now Optimus knows that we're getting ready for a carpentry job across town. And so it starts to load up my autonomous robo van with some of the tools and supplies that we're going to need for today's job. Now, some of those supplies that we need, I don't have in my shop. And so while I was sleeping without even needing to bother me, Optimus had ordered a delivery of supplies to be brought to the job site. So our autonomous robo van brings Optimus and I to the job site and Optimus starts unloading everything we need. A few minutes later, that supply robo van I talked about shows up and Optimus unloads that as well. I check in with the homeowner, tell them what we're going to be doing today, and then Optimus gets to work doing it. Optimus has learned from some of the best carpenters in the world how to do highly specialized carpentry. I double check that everything seems to be in place for today's job, and then Optimus does what I would have done, installing cabinets, installing trim, and a few interior doors. By now, it's about nine o'clock in the morning. I decide to take the RoboVan home and catch up on some reading and calls with some prospective clients. So normally around 4 p.m., I I'd be packing up the tools and heading home, but that's just because I'm human and I get tired. My employee Optimus is not tired. He did have to change out his battery once during the day, but that only took a minute. Optimus didn't have to take a coffee break or a lunch break, so he's gotten quite a bit done. He checks in with the homeowner and they tell him that they're actually not bothered by him working for a couple more hours, so it does, and does a few more tasks until 7 p.m. At that time, Optimus cleans up packs up and hails a cyber cab back to my home. On the way though, it stops at the grocery store and picks up a few items for tonight's dinner. When it gets home, it puts some food away, gets right to cooking dinner for me. And after dinner, Optimus clears the dishes, cleans up the kitchen, and then gets busy doing some light housework while I relax as I pretty much have been all day long. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a novel's worth of information describing every possible job that Optimus can do. I'm only using this day in the life as an example to get you started. Use your imagination. Think about what Optimus could do for you, not just at home, but out in the world. Is your Optimus a landscaper? Is your Optimus a house painter? Is your Optimus a trash collector? Optimus will be all these things and more. And Optimus won't just be a laborer. Optimus could probably be a chiropractor. Optimus could probably be a doctor or a lawyer. Could be a caregiver or a cook. Could be flying an airplane or a teacher or a firefighter or even possibly a police officer. What do all these things mean? How will they affect human society? Our economy, our culture, they will affect them profoundly. And yet we're not talking about it. We're not thinking about it. And most of us are not investing in it. So this is your challenge. You call yourself a disruptive investor, right? Then why aren't you thinking about it? Do you think we're wrong and this isn't going to happen? If so, tell us why below. Otherwise, get to work. And by work, I mean flexing that imagination muscle. You had it as a kid. I know you did. We all pretended that refrigerator boxes were castles. We all pretended that we were spacemen fighting aliens. We all played imaginative games. And then we grew up, life beats us down, and we thought that we had to be more realistic, right? Well, finally the future has caught up with us and we're about to enter the most thrilling and exciting ride I think humanity has ever seen. Most of us will not be ready for it. But if you start doing the work now, you will. And by being ready for it, I don't just mean psychologically, but also financially. I don't know about you, but even if Elon's right and humanoid autonomous robots unlock near limitless GDP and an age of abundance, I sure wouldn't mind entering that age with a nice, sizable bank account. And once you're done thinking about all this amazing future stuff, brace yourself and then talk to other people about it. It's not going to be fun. You are not going to have tremendous breakthroughs with these people. But if there are people in your life that you care about, start bringing them into the future with you. It's really hard. I mean, the reason we're talking kind of just to a select narrow group, which is you, is that most people are not ready for this. And how do we know that? Because when we talk about other autonomous robots, which are the Tesla self-driving cars, we are constantly met with just a real cognitive dissonance, a look on their face that goes, I can't, I don't even know where to begin to talk about this with you. Even though we can drive up in a car and say, hey, sit in it and I'll show you. Most people don't even want to do that. It reminds me of the Neuralink chip that Elon talks about and how there's people have two reactions. It's either that's impossible, it can't be done, or isn't that already being done? Mm -hmm. I think that for you guys, a lot of you have been in the Tesla space for a while. And so there has been a lot of back and forth around, will Tesla do this? Will Tesla do that? There's a lot of new folks coming on who, oh, there's just a Tesla and I can buy it. And it was no big deal. They didn't have to wait. It was just, they heard about it. They bought it just like they bought a new TV. And I think that they might be missing out Hopefully you're new and you can tell me that I'm wrong, but they might be missing out on the fact that for the longest time, Tesla 
was like, oh, is it going to happen? Is it not? And this is exactly where we are with autonomous robots. And I think that having gone through that, you and I, it's what has taught us that this is going to happen. I think that for a lot of other people, they just go, well, nothing happens until it does. And I don't see anything before. And I don't talk about how crazy it was after. I just live my life. And all of a sudden, I can buy a smartphone. And all of a sudden, I can buy a 4K television for $500. Um, I don't think what an amazing achievement any of this is. I'm just going through my life. And I think that that is the crazy part to me, is that so many people will just accept things. They'll just be like, oh, yeah, gigabit internet speeds coming to my house when you used to have dial-up, when you used to not even have dial-up and there was no connection to the outside world. And if you're looking for what to do next, because I get it, this is pretty complicated stuff, uh, you might want to consider joining us over on Patreon. There we have an investor club. And if you join us there, we talk about this stuff every week and we have a Slack where all those intelligent people who are already getting it are talking about different subjects in different channels. It's really mind-blowing stuff and it takes a little bit of work, but you know that as a disruptive investor, if you don't put the work in, you're not going to benefit, right? So consider joining us over there. It helps support the work we do, but it also helps you. That's why we did it. We'll see you guys next week on Disruptive Investing.